Okay, just like before, we can get a better understanding of how to actually apply the separation of variable technique by looking at an example uh, of how to apply it to a particular problem. In this case, we're going to look for the potential inside and outside of a sphere uh, that has a particular boundary condition. So uh, I'll just draw a picture of that. Here's our sphere. Okay, let's remind ourselves what the coordinate system looks like. Something like that. Uh, and in this case, right, we're going to still assume azimuthal symmetry. Okay, for this particular problem, we're going to assume that the radius of our sphere uh, is going to be, oops, that's going to be a radius of A. And we're going to apply a potential on our sphere that's going to depend on theta. Okay, so we're going to have a potential here uh, that looks like V naught theta. So what does that mean? Well, kind of you can get like a some kind of gradient uh, of the potential in this direction as theta changes, right? Theta B equal to zero would be right up here. Theta equal to pi would be down here. So you could have some gradient with respect to theta. Okay. So for this problem, uh, the potential on the outside of the sphere is going to simplify to uh, v naught theta. Okay, so that's at the radius of A. Okay, so this is our first boundary condition. And that boundary condition tells us that V uh, is equal to let me write that a little better. Our V R theta is equal to V naught theta, okay, when R is equal to A. That's our first boundary condition. We're going to assume the same boundary condition that we did last time, essentially, was if you get really far from this surface that's at a potential, uh, then you go to a potential equal zero. So if you're getting really, really far from this sphere, uh, then you're going towards a potential of zero or just generally the potential is zero at infinity. Okay, let's write out our general solution that we found in the last lecture. I cheated and copied and pasted, so there you go. This is our uh, general solution that we found in the last lecture, okay, using our separation of variables techniques. So now what we need to do is apply the boundary conditions to find our constants. Just like we did before. Uh, okay, similar technique is going to be just a little bit di different. Okay, so let's do this. So we've got our general solution. I'm just going to paste it here again. Get rid of this guy. Okay, and I know that boundary condition two, this one that says that the potential should go to zero when R is, uh, R goes to zero. If I look here, that tells me that um, this first term has to go to zero or this particular constant has to be zero or else, right, this term would blow up. Okay, so that tells me that a to the L equals zero or this term here would blow up at R goes to infinity. Okay, so that first term is zero, so we can simplify. Again, we're just going to go through the boundary conditions one by one in whatever order that makes sense. Okay, so now I've got already something that is much simpler. OK, 
Okay. Something that looks like that. All right. And let's apply our second boundary condition. That tells me that this thing, if I evaluate it at A, it has to be equal to the V naught theta, which has to be equal to the sum here. Okay, where now I'm going to plug A in for R. Oops, and I'm going to write that in the order. Okay, so if we look at this and I think about what's going on, okay, this here is known, okay, that's some potential that I set on the sphere. This A here is known because you know the radius. Okay, we know these for a given L. And then this is our only unknown. So this is kind of like the C sub N that we were dealing with before, okay? So just like before, we're gonna use a trick. We're gonna use, uh, and a similar trick, we're gonna use uh, Fourier's trick, but now it's gonna be a special situation. This is for our uh, Lagrangier polynomials. So it's gonna look just a little bit different, all right? So, um, first I'm going to start off by saying again what I just said in that Mathematica uh, lecture, what I showed you uh, when I actually integrated these in Mathematica, is that the Lagrangier polynomials are orthogonal, which means that if I uh, multiply two together, and in this case, because I'm evaluating them at cosine theta, I have to add an extra sine theta in here. Um, but if I multiply two of them together, I'm going to multiply it by sine theta in this case. And uh, I integrate, I get zero if L is not equal to K. And I get two over two L plus one K. I didn't show you that in Mathematica. I just showed you a number, but you could go back and run it and see that that is in fact the case if L is equal to K, okay? So this is only not zero when L is equal to K, okay? This comes from the general case where I'm just evaluating the Lagrangier polynomial at X. Okay, so I could write this at x, and when I do it at x, I integrate between 1 and negative 1. And the general case looks similar. This is for L not equal to k, and this is for L equal to k. And this tells us that these Lagrangier polynomials are orthogonal. Very exciting. It is exciting because that means you can build functions with them, okay? Uh, in this case, it looks different uh, because that sine function, by the way, comes from the fact that we did uh, x equals cosine theta, and that gives us that uh, dx equals negative sine theta, d theta, that gives us a negative sign, but then the way we put our integration limits in, we actually switch to the function. So I'll just note, we reversed the integration limits to get rid of the negative. Okay, so that's how you get from this version, the general version, to what we're using, which works for our Laplace's equation in spherical coordinates. All right, so we're going to use this fact, similar to what we did before, to solve for our coefficient b uh, sub l, okay? So let's use this 
to solve for b sub l. Okay. All right. So we've got this relationship here. Okay. That I just wrote down. Okay, what we're going to do for our trick is we're going to multiply both sides by our PK evaluate, evaluated at cosine theta. And then we're going to, uh, actually, and we have to do sine theta as well. And then we're going to integrate. So what is this going to give us? Well, the right-hand side, if you can imagine doing that, is going to end up looking like, uh, I'm going to pull the sum out here just like I did before. I can pull out this constant because the constants here uh, don't depend on theta. Okay, the integral is going to look like P, uh, of L times the cosine of theta, P sub K times the cosine of theta. I'm going to throw a sine of theta in there and a D theta. Okay. And just like before, this is only not equal to zero. Okay. When K equals L. And in that case, it is going to be equal to 2 divided by 2 L plus 1. Okay, what does this give us? Well, if we go back to what we had before, then that tells us that uh, our B sub L over A sub L plus 1 times that solution to that integral, which is 2 uh, divided by 2 sub L plus 1 has to be equal to our the left-hand side, which is going to be the Lagrangier polynomial evaluated at L, or evaluated at cosine of theta, the Lth poly Lagrangier polynomial evaluated at cosine theta times that potential that we put on the sphere, okay, times the sine of theta times d theta, okay? And by the way, uh, I kind of replaced k with l here. So just remember, k is equal to l. So we got rid of all the rest of the terms and our sum here by recognizing this thing was only not going to be 0 when k is equal to l. And then I substituted an l back in for this because l is more typical to use. Okay, so now I can rearrange that. And when I rearrange to solve for B sub L, I end up with this function here. And this particular, particular function can be integrated to find the B sub L's, okay? So as long as I can do that integral, okay, I can find the B sub L's uh, for each particular term that's going to be in the sum here. If I go all the way back here, the sum of even back further here, the sum here of my general solution. Okay, so let me go ahead and write that back over here. Okay, uh, this is going to get plugged into the general solution, which looks like
that, okay? So I can use, again, this integral, that's gonna give me the Bs for every L, and then I can plug that into here, and then I've got a function that I can plot. I know everything in it, even though this looks kinda different, right? I know what the Lagrangian polynomials look like, I just have to look them up in Mathematica or a table, okay? And then the Ls are going to change as I increase the sum. This is the solution here for v r theta outside the sphere, okay? And that's because I use boundary conditions that defined the region between this shell and infinity, okay? All right, so that's one example. I'm gonna stop the video here and then I'll do another lecture and we'll talk about figuring out the potential inside the shell.